Hi, welcome to Lacquer Food Cookbook, where every dish has a story. Today I'm going to make South African Cape Malay fish curry. The fish I'm going to use is a firm fish, and in this case it's rockling, where it's a very fleshy fish. Then going through the list of ingredients, I start off with an onion, finely chopped, three tomatoes, which I'm going to grate, the coriander, which will come much later. Most important is about 30-40 grams of tamarind. You can use one teaspoon of tamarind paste. In this case, I'm using the tamarind pulp, which still has the seeds. So, we'll come to this. Then we have all the spices, salt, pepper, oil. And I'm using sunflower oil because that is the oil that my mum used to use. And sugar, which is going to balance the sweet and sour because that is what Cape Malay cuisine is all about. With a base pan or pot or a wok or something with a nice wide brim because you're going to pack your fish in. So as soon as it's hot, put your oil, about 50-60 mils of oil, just to cover the bottom of the pot. I'm going to use the seeds. This is the fennel seeds. So about a teaspoon, just a nice big pinch is usually what a teaspoon. Your cumin seeds, also about a teaspoon, nice pinch. Just let it cook around. There's just the most amazing smell. And now your chopped up onions is ready to go. And it's very, very important for your onions to be golden brown because the, your, fit, your curry will be tasting oniony instead of caramelized. A teaspoon of garlic. Now all other curries will take ginger, but no ginger in the fish curry. My mother said that the ginger breaks the fish. So one bird's eye chili, which I've cut in half lengthwise and that is just so that the fragrance and the uh, taste can be released slowly. Just stir that up. A little bit of water I'm putting in. Not a lot. Don't use a lot of water here because the fish has its own water and that will your fish will become quite watery. Now the spices that we have already mixed before and just a little bit of water there just so the spices so that it doesn't burn so let that just cook up for two minutes or so depending on the pot that you are using uh, it's very easy to burn your spices so add your grated tomatoes as you can see there's a lot of fluid that I'm going to add the tamarind. So that is what the tamarind looks like. Now for the curry leaves. Some people put the curry leaves in with the, with the oil. I put it in now. Now just crush it in your hand bruising it a little bit and that will release the smell. So all the fluid is there. What I'm going to do now is add the salt and the sugar. I take about a teaspoon of salt which is usually enough and sugar. You've got to balance the sweet and the sour now. I'm using raw sugar and remember that the brown sugar is actually much less sweeter than the white sugar. I'll start off with about a tablespoon. One for luck. Your gravy has got to be absolutely perfect before you put in your fish. So you've got to balance the sweet and sour. 
I'll leave it for a few more minutes so that that gravy can just thicken up. Okay. Now, going to put the fish in. It's an absolutely divine smell coming here. You have to make sure that your gravy is as you want it. So, just, just spoon it over. And don't turn it around. After about five minutes, once it reaches the boil, it starts cooking, just spoon it over again. After about eight to ten minutes, just roughly chop coriander. And the rest I'll keep for the salad. From here, just before you serve, two to three minutes. So, serving it up now. Serve it with yellow rice. And I've made two side dishes of tomato with chili, coriander and onion. And cucumber, also with the same, but in this we've put in some vinegar and we balance the sweet and sour. The, the rice has been steamed with uh, cinnamon, uh, star anise and cardamom. Yes, like it's lekker.